I'm probably Santa Claus, but for the rest of y'all, uh, I'm Pastor Rick, and I'm here to give you a little bit of a Christmas message tonight. I, I, I want you to fully understand this. We are here celebrating not just the birth of Jesus Christ, but we're also here celebrating what His birth means to all of us. Because if it wouldn't have happened, we wouldn't be here right now. That's worth celebrating. We get to be together with brothers and sisters and friends and neighbors, and you're sitting by somebody you don't even know, and hey, if it wasn't for Jesus, you wouldn't get to make new friends tonight. How about that? I think that's worth celebrating. We're also, we are here celebrating the most radical man that ever walked on this planet. I mean, I don't know about you, but walking on water is pretty rad. I, I don't know about you, but walking up into a, a graveyard somewhere and saying, Hey, Lazarus, come here. And, and a dead man getting out of the grave, that's pretty radical. Amen. He was born to bring us greater things. So a lot of folks here tonight are wearing these uh, little flat bracelets here that say greater things on them. There's always hope for a greater good. As long as there's a new generation coming up, there's always hope for greater things. Jesus brought those greater things. If anyone understood the need for greater things, I, I believe it was him. In, in the song that was just saying, O come Emmanuel, in the second verse, there's an interesting line on it that says, O come thou rod of Jesse. I, I leaned over and asked the, the friend next to me there, I said, do you understand that? I'm just curious, then, how many of y'all, you don't know what that means where it says, Thou rod of Jesse? Show of hands, how many of you admit and say, Yeah, I don't really have a clue what that's about? I'm glad you asked. You see, in the Bible, just for some of you that, that don't quite get how the Bible's laid out, it's, it's written in two parts. There's, a, there's an old part and a new part. Basically, it's before Christ and from Christ's birth on. Well, before he was born, there was a bunch of people who were called prophets. And, and these prophets, God would talk to them, and, and, and God would give them promises to write about. And one of those promises was that the Messiah would be the rod of Jesse. Anybody here heard of David and Goliath before? You know, King David of Israel, how he killed Goliath and Goliath? Well, David's dad, his name was Jesse. And the promise was that from Jesse and his son David... And on and on down the line, eventually there would come a day when the Messiah would be born. You can look in your Bible, you can look in the book of Matthew and in the book of Luke, and you'll see the lineage. Follow that along until one day that promise came true. Jesus was the rod of Jesse. Amen. It's an incredible way that that was proven through time. In fact, in the Bible you will find 114 times where there was a promise given that said, in that day, there's a day coming somewhere. Today might not be real great. Right. But there's a day coming that's going to be a whole lot better. Amen. Amen. These were promises from God. Some of them went something like this. I know you're oppressed, but there's a better day coming. Amen. I know your heart is broken. There's a better day coming. I, I know you may feel like you've been bruised by life. And maybe somebody has made a choice. Or they've made some decisions. That have caused pain in your life. But God says there's a better day coming. Amen. 114 times it says in that day. Oh what a hope we have knowing that there's a better day. Amen. Now here's the crazy thing. The book of Luke in the Bible. Gives us most of what we know about the Christmas story. It gives us a lot of that. It also records the very first message that Jesus ever preached. You can find it in Luke chapter 4. Jesus went to church. What a novel idea. If you have nowhere to go tomorrow, please find one of the local churches and attend that church. Because even Jesus went to church. Jesus went to church and, and, and he read out loud from the Old Testament. It was the book of Isaiah. He read it there where it said that there's a day coming when good news would be preached to those who were not saved. He read where there was good news coming to the people who had all kinds of bad things happening in their life. He said there was a day coming when those that were held captive 
by sins or addictions or things like that, that they would be set free. He says, in that day, it will happen. He even read where God promised to heal broken hearts. In that day. Somebody say, in that day. In that day. There's a day coming when those hearts would be healed. He even says that there's a day coming when those who were bruised by life would be able to find healing. Maybe you're that person tonight. Maybe your heart's been broken. Maybe you're living with bruises. I want to give you some good news. There's a new day. This is that day. Because in that same passage, Jesus stepped up and he said, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. What did that mean? That meant those 114 promises, all of those promises from hundreds of years back, Jesus went to church one day and he said, today is the day where all those promises come true. Amen. Amen. Now folks, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I have some wonderful news tonight. I I'm so privileged to be able to stand here before you and tell you this. The day Jesus said that, that meant that that day, and, and, and the next day, and then the next day, and then the next day, look at your neighbor and say, and then the next day, guess what? Today is still that day. Amen. Today his promises still come true. The greater things that were promised back then can happen right now today. Amen. Amen. You came in a wonderful opportunity to hear this wonderful music and hear the message in the song, but I want to tell somebody, today is a day of goodwill to all men, just like the angel said it would be. Today is a day of peace in Sykeston. I, I told someone here a while back, I said, you know, there's a lot of turmoil going on all around the world, but meanwhile in Sykeston, Missouri, I see blacks and whites coming together, arm in arm, hand in hand. I This day is this scripture fulfilled. Amen. The greater things that you hope for can be found right here tonight. Right. Some point in this concert, as it's already been mentioned, there's a prayer room. Folks and I stepped in there a moment ago. They were praying with the lady. It was so powerful. It was so awesome. A heart being healed. Lives being restored. That's what Jesus can do. I'm going to lead us in a prayer tonight. If you would join with me, please. Lord, today is a radical day. This is an awesome day with so many awesome people here. Lord, I'm overwhelmed by all the promises in your word. There's so many that we can, we can turn to. But Lord, I thank you for the promise where you said that you would never leave us nor forsake us. Even in the day where things seem so bad, Lord, you're right here with us right now. Lord, there may be people in this room whose hearts have been broken, whose lives have been bruised. Lord, who need good news in their life. And today we bring them your good news. Lord Jesus, I declare in this place that today be your day. Your day to heal lives and your day to minister to those who are hurting. Lord, let your glory be revealed in this place. Let your word, your promises come true in every life that's in this building tonight, Lord. I pray that in Jesus' name. If you're ready for him, for all those promises to come true in your life, how about we give Jesus a hand clap of thanksgiving for all those promises.